Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome back, this is HD. I just took a little quick intermission break between game 3 and this game 4 to grab a little bit of food. Uh, it is past midnight right now and I know it's not the best thing in the world to eat right before you're about to go to sleep. That's probably why I'm getting a little fat. Uh, I've had some people, it was kind of funny, I was in San Francisco the other day and then some somebody walked up to me and said, Are you HD? You look a little fatter than you usually are on video. And I was like, yeah, I know, man. I don't want to talk to you! So I just kind of ran away and cried in a corner. No, I really do need to stop with the, uh, with the eating late and everything. I, uh, I don't know. Anyways, I'm still gonna be casting games for you guys despite my broken back, despite the hot temperature, and despite my fat butt. I will bring, be bringing these games to you guys. And then after this, we'll probably be doing a little bit of a jog to work off all the extra weight. Now, this is game four between Tarson and between White Ra. Uh, game three, a little bit of a of a little bit of a sleeper, I would say, as both players were kind of playing this uber macro game. Didn't really see any kind of a harass or any attacks as both players just built up a big army over the course of about ten or fifteen minutes, and then it was just one big engagement. And Tarson kind of got the better of that. The one cool thing, though, was Tarson's sneaky command center. And by sneaky, I do mean a very sneaky. It was hidden beyond all eyes and ears. And White Run never really saw it. And it definitely helped Tarson win that game. But even more than just the sneaky hidden command center, I feel like Tarson's just superior macro helped him win the game because Tarson is, a, is the kind of player that likes to play long standard games. He likes to build up in macro. You guys saw in the last games, he was ahead, in the last game at least, he was ahead and he never really pushed his advantage. He just continued to sit back in macro and that's the kind of player he is. So. I feel like the onus now is on Whitera. It is 2-1. He dropped a game to Tarson. Uh, I don't think Whitera should or could afford to drop another game. What he needs to do is bring back the aggression. And Shakuris Plateau is a map where, you know, things tend to get pretty macro heavy. Especially this old version, a new version of Shakuris Plateau, without the rocks here connecting the two bases. So, unlikely to see any inner uh, rock, you know, secret passageway attacks here. But... The thing here is White Red does have the option of going with his trademark War Prism. And I do feel like War Prism would be a powerful opening based on the spawn positionings. So, I don't know. I'm kind of suggesting a little bit for White Red. I'm hoping that he listens to what I have to say. He may just opt to play a macro game as well. And if that is the case, then so be it. Tarson now does have a Reaper on the way. Always a good idea to bring out those Reapers because they're so good at scouting. They're, they they come with the jetpack. They're basically an SCV's bigger brother. If you guys ever notice, the SCV gets the kind of puny, pathetic jetpack. He doesn't really get to flee, jump off cliffs and stuff. He just gets to hover in the air, which is cool. I think that's awesome and everything to be able to hover in the air. How often, you know, if I could have an SCV's jetpack, I would want it. Just wouldn't want to be cooped up inside that thing all day. But uh, the Reaper is even cooler. He gets the awesome jetpack and it is able to jump up and down the cliff. So, uh, Tarson, of course, gonna be going for that command center off of one barracks. Very macro-based once again. White Ra, though, what's he got cooked up? It does look like he's gonna be going for the Nexus off of one gate as well. So we may be seeing, once again, a macro game for both of these players. And the Reaper here, can't exactly jump up that high. I was saying, you know, the Reaper's super cool and stuff, but he can't jump up the double cliff. He has to jump up this cliff first before he can make his way up the second cliff. Um, you know, we, we need, like, the Reaper's bigger, or the SCV's bigger, bigger brother, the Reaper's big brother, uh, to be introduced in Heart of the Swarm before we see something like that. It'll be called, like, the... I don't know. There's the SCV, there's the Reaper. I don't know what the next unit would be that could jump over a double cliff. I don't even know if that would ever be introduced in the game. It might be a little bit imbalanced. But then one thing that the Reaper can do is... Oh, no. It did just jump down from a single cliff. I thought it jumped down from a double cliff there. But it has now hidden itself down there for now. And it will be able to pop back in and do a little bit more scouting if it pleases. And it does look like both players are going to be playing the macro game. White Ra and Tarson both. Uh, Tarson now has a couple of barracks inside his main. And he does look like he's going to be doing that Marine Marauder bio build once again. Would not surprise me to see a factory straight into the reactor starport. And hello, hello, White Rug going for a very fast Twilight Council. This is a little unorthodox. Usually Protoss players, after they get their expo, will throw down one or two more gates 
and then possibly a robotics facility, but to also add on the Twilight Council and a robotics facility tells me that he may be going for a Blink Stalker build with an Observer, and he's gonna use the Observer to spot the, gr the high ground, and then he's gonna use the Stalkers to blink right on in. Uh, if that should be the case, that would be certainly a very interesting interesting strategy to, uh, strategy to watch. I'm getting a little tongue-tied here. And is he gonna get the blink? No, I'm totally wrong on my build. Going straight for Templar Archives. So, all right, he may be going for the Charge Lot Archon build, which um, recent, as of recent days has become quite popular. All you do is you just go mass Charge Lots and mass Archons, and unbelievably, it works fairly well against Marines Marauders. Remember, Archons do plus, I think, 11 or so damage to bio units, and it's a very interesting build to watch. I hesitate to say he's gonna do it because I just said he was gonna do the Blink Stalker build, but then he threw down the Templar Archives. And yeah, he's not gonna do it, so he's gonna go right into a War Prism. All right, my builds are all off today. <laughs> so he is gonna go for the good old War Prism. I like it, I love it, I want more of it. And he's gonna be warping in Templar for Psionic Storm. How interesting, so White right here, <laughs> Even manages to confuse me, the omniscient caster, who um, I should just be demoted now. I should never cast games for just completely missing the build timings two times in a row. But yeah, here comes a warp prism. I think I've been fired. I'm no longer driving it. Uh, White probably doesn't like me too much anymore. And he is going to be loading a single zealot. Make that two. May warp. Wait for the templars to come in as well. No, for now that I don't know why he's leaving the Templar next to the, the Twilight Council. I, I would imagine he was going to bring them into the War Prism so he could get a couple storms off on the SCVs, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Now, he isn't going to be warping any Templars with this War Prism for sure, simply because he doesn't have the... Uh, no, actually, never mind. He, he could actually warp in Templars, and they will come in with the full energy. Kaidan Am Amulet was removed from... Uh, the up from Battle.net, or from the game, for a long, long time ago, and here comes the Zealots, coming right into the Mineral Line, signature White Rub move here, dropping Zealots off, and Tarson, oh, in the meanwhile, was actually pushing across the center of the map, so both players here are almost going into a base race situation, but the storm, devastating the Marines on the ground, but Tarson quickly stemming out of the way of the storm, and we do have a very interesting game on our hands here, as all the SCVs have been forced to mine at the natural, White Rub here in a bit of a predicament, but with that arc on the powerhouse of the Protoss, that will ease be able to take out these last Marauders and Marines. It does 35 damage per shot, and it is a massive unit, so the Marauder cannot slow it down with the concussive shells. Meanwhile, Zealots are still doing some pretty good damage in here, but without that charge ability, uh, they're not going to be able to deal with the Marauders very well. These Zealots need to get some exercise and get some, uh, some, uh, some step, some pep in their step. But the Zealots do all end up falling down, and what an interesting little trade right there, with Tarson actually getting a little bit on the worser end of that. Tarson didn't do that much damage, if any. He only traded armies with Whiterow, whereas Whiterow was able to kill a couple of SCVs. So you guys can see now Tarson is suffering a little bit, and Whiterow with that brilliant War Prism attack is looking pretty good in this game, fearing Tarson, now scaring Tarson into fear mode, and now he's gotta throw up a couple of turrets just to protect against another War Prism, and indeed, oh my god, it's a War Prism with Archons? Oh, this is gonna be so awesome if White Rock can do it. Oh, he's gonna drop the Ar Archons away from the Missile Turret. Can't really sacrifice the Warp Prism because uh, whoever's driving it right now, it isn't me, but whoever's driving it doesn't obviously wanna die. And oh, these Archons are gonna have to get loaded up. One of the Archons falls and oh! Thank God White Rock fired me from driving that Warp Prism because I did not wanna die. And uh, it looks like uh, White Rub losing the War Prism for the first time in this series, but you know, there isn't much he could do about that. Those Marines with Stim are very, very fast. And um, White Rub now quickly rebuilding another War Prism. I love it. He's so good with the War Prism play. He also has a pylon over here, but Tarson was going to quickly take that out with his dropship en route. But the nice thing for White Rub here is he can cancel the pylon, and now he knows that dropships are out and about, and he will be prepared for any dropship attacks. And that is why he's placing a pylon down on the low ground to get more vision of the perimeter of the map. So Whitera is just on top of things right now. Both these players, in fact, just playing such a good game of StarCraft. And this is really StarCraft at its finest. Whitera, the epitome of Protoss, and Tarson, one of the most 
powerful macro players in the world. Uh, we do have another Warp Prism play coming in here. So innovative by White Row, but he's gonna land Templars down and they're gonna land the Storms, killing off SCVs, but the Warp Prism goes down. How many SCVs did he kill? He really only got maybe five or six, maybe eight at most, but losing the Warp Prism and two Templars is almost, I think it's almost 500 in gas invested, and that was a huge blow to White Row. I don't think it was worth it at all. He ends up using a feedback on the dropship, but not able to kill it. The dropship doesn't really have that much energy, and it looks like White Ra here is may end up losing another Templar if he's not careful. Has to bring in reinforcements, and they should be able to dispatch this Marine very easily. Wow, so this game, guys, much better, I would say, much better to watch than the last game. The last game was a big macro fest. This game, lots of action all over the map. White Ra, I think me and him maybe thinking a little bit on the same wavelength here. Uh, you know, White Ra knows he can't get into a macro game against Tarson because that's where Tarson is at his best. So White Ra now is using his signature move, the Stone Cold Stunner, the Rock Bottom. It is the, the White Ra Warp Prism, and it, it so far hasn't done too well for him. The first one was definitely very good, but the, the next one with the Templars, a bit of a fail. But he is still building War Prisms, man. He's so active about these, these War Prisms and the White Red War Prism signature move coming in to do some more damage, this time with two Zealots and a Templar. And we'll see what it can do. Oh, but in the meanwhile, Tarson actually moving out with a couple of dropships on the north side manages to miss the Warprism. Both players kind of going for a drop here. The airways are filled with heart, with very, very vicious units, and it looks like a storm going down, but not really taking out too much. White Row will this time be able to keep his Warprism alive, and that's very important. Needs to keep it alive. But in the meantime, Tarson coming in with his own drop, and wow, White Row has to warp in Zealots right away. Ends up having to lose, uh, I don't know what building that was. It might have been a Dark Shrine or a Photon Cannon, either way. Uh, or maybe just a pylon, but yeah, White Ra here coming in with the Zealots, but ends up being that his robotics facility blocking his Zealots, and those Marauders and Marines able to do some pretty good damage for their money's worth, and only only one or two of them going down. So, good play by Tarson. Tarson slowly but surely getting more and more of an edge against White Ra. We have battles on multiple fronts right now, and the thing about playing a macro game is if your opponent is gonna start to bring pressure to you and you're gonna start to play this little pressure-oriented harass style, then you need to be able to eke out these little advantages over time just like that. White Red gets a couple more SCVs. You guys can see it's 29 SCVs killed over compared to 10. So White Red is slowly but surely eking out advantages over time. At the same time, Tarson is also doing some pretty good work as well with his dropships, but I feel like as of late, the last couple of Warp Prisms have definitely done their damage, and White Row wisely has kept them alive. He's ran them over to the bottom right-hand side. These Vikings are in search and pursuit mode right now, but unfortunately, the the Warp Prism has disappeared. And huh, I wonder if I wonder if White Row decided to deploy the Warp Prism right now. Could he just warp in like a couple of Zealots to do to go do some fishing or something? That'd be kind of funny. But uh, yeah, Tarson here trying to find that Warp Prism has failed in that regard. And both players, all the meanwhile, even while harassing and dealing with harass, have built up pretty sizable armies. Tarson may be still a little bit behind in supply. I would love to see him grab a third because he definitely is running low now compared to White Ra, who has had a third running for a much longer time. So I fear Tarson a little bit in the macro game uh, in the sense that he's a great player, but I feel like this game White Ra may have the upper hand. So Tarson finally gonna do a little bit of catch up and oh my god, the Vikings in search mode for the War Prism. The War Prism ends up running right into the Vikings. And down it goes. Now the Zealots get to do a little fishing. They are now dead uh, bodies under the ocean. I don't know what, the, what is that thing? That is the ugliest shark dolphin I've ever seen. It's gonna eat those Zealots for breakfast. Anyways, uh, is White Red gonna make another War Prism is now I'm, the question I'm wondering. He is making an ob, so we'll see after the Observer. Uh, and he does have a lot of charge slots. In fact, he is doing the charge slot Archon build. Yes, I was right to some extent. White Ray is indeed kind of doing the charge slot Archon build here. He's got a lot of charge slots and some Colossus, but he has Archons on the ground as well. A couple at least. And uh, like I said before, guys, this is actually a surprisingly good build combined with uh, Guardian Shield and Force Fields. 
the Archons and Charge Shots just become so beefy once they get their armor and uh, shield upgrades, it becomes very difficult for the Marine Marauder Ball to break that. When you've got, I mean, just imagine yourself as a Marine Marauder and there's like 50 Charge Shots and Archons like barreling towards you. They look like madmen. I mean, you'd be scared, I'd be scared. I'd run the other way. So, uh, White right here, I mean, he's got he's got definitely a ton of charge slots. Look at this, almost a full control group and more. It's filled up the screen to the second tab. And, I mean, when they hit charge, essentially that's the Protoss version of Stim. So it's going to be very devastating. Um, both these players here still have very big armies, and they're kind of both flirting with fire right now, dancing with death. Neither player wanting to commit because they don't want to make a mistake that can cost them the game. Um, it looks like a lone zealot here. This guy definitely is on the on the drugs of some sort. It's going to run in there and runs into marines and marauders. Ends up dying for no reason except to report back some scouting information to White Rub, which is actually very important. And on the upgrades tab, we do have ground weapons and now shields on the way. So the upgrades for weapons and armor are pretty much complete. And now White Rose is going to focus down on those shields. And as far as Tarson goes, he had, does have 2 2. So both players very, very high up in those upgrades. White Rose is favoring a small lead. And oh my god, they're just playing with fire. Like I said before, both players are so big right now. White Rose does have a fourth base. Tarson doesn't though, and here comes Tarson, he may be thinking about attacking, but no, once again! Oh god, here we go! This is the situation we've been looking to see, and here comes the EMP Shockwave doing so much damage, but the charge loss just all running in there, and the charge loss are so damn good at that, and oh my god, the Vikings are gonna get destroyed by the Archons! They do do splash damage, more Storm getting landed down, a lot of the charge loss have finally died out to those Marauders, good control by Tarson to keep them alive, and it looks like, oh, Tarson! able to cream the floor with White Rose forces and now Tarson despite his units being very much in the red and dead they are gonna continue their march forward gonna check for a nexus here but there is none nexus here and I mean at this time this is a very precarious position for White Rose he's got no forces chrono boosting out his warp gates all of them under chrono boost mode right now he needs to quickly muster up an army to deal with Tarson because if Tarson decides to attack he could end up losing a nexus but surprisingly you know, surprisingly, Tarson is still playing a very conservative game despite his lead at 160 over 116. Despite taking a huge, big battle and winning, he is deciding to play conservative once again, just like in Game 3. And in this situation, I can't really fault him because a lot of his Marines and Marauders and units were very, very weakened. Uh, they were all in the orange and red, and a couple of well-placed storms could have devastated his army. So I think he was waiting to fall back and heal up and, uh, I mean, now that he's given White Rose time to recover, it, it doesn't really make that much sense to attack anymore. <laughs> On the other hand, White Rose, though, being the unpredictable and crazy player he is, it may be the best time to attack is any time. So, yeah, here he goes again. Once again, Charge Lots and Templars. A couple of snipes going down there. I think it went on the Zealots. And, oh, my God, beautiful EMPs. White Rose immediately using the Wasted Templar into an Archon and charging his Charge Lots in here. But they are not going to be able to do that much damage. More EMPs going off, whittling the Archons of all their shields. And these Archons are pretty much done for. And once again, Tarson exerts his will over White Rose. And this time around, I don't think Tarson is going to hesitate. I think he will make a concerted push unless this this lone zealot manages to pull Tarson's whole army back home. Wow, Tarson here playing so conservatively. I really feel like he should have pushed there and try to take a nexus. Perhaps he was concerned about the Templar, which there are quite a few back here, but uh, you, uh, you know, uh, the Artosis theory is great and all, but sometimes you gotta go with the Jalizer God of War theory. Sometimes you just gotta go for the jugular. And I think this is one of those moments when going for the jugular really will pay off a lot more than playing the conservative mindset. And I just don't know, guys. Tarson, I mean, obviously he's got... Oh my god, a horde of barracks. Look how many barracks he's got up. He can rebuild his army so quickly. Uh, he has almost 100 supply advantage over White Rose right now. Yes, he's playing very conservative, but I guess he just don't wanna, doesn't want to risk a costly mistake. So he is going to just hang back for now. Finally going to work up on some rocks here. And I guess his Marines and Marauders and Ghosts are just getting a little... They're getting a little antsy just like I was. They're like, Darson. We want to do something. Let us give us something to attack. And Tarson was like, "All right, all right, guys, to make you guys happy, 
I'll let you guys attack the rocks over here. There, you guys happy now? So Tarzan <laughs> gives his troops a little bit of target practice. Make sure those guns are still working, nothing's jammed. Uh, dropping a couple of commsats here, just checking for observers. Still playing the most conservative game of StarCraft II I have seen in quite some time. Upgrade. I'm not Upgrade. entirely sure why. <laughs> I'm not entirely sure why there's no why he doesn't see the nexus here, but he sees all the other buildings. Perhaps he scouted there before the nexus was planted, or maybe he got a snipe on the nexus. I don't know. Uh, it does look like Tarson finally is going to push out. Uh, <laughs> hallelujah! Hallelujah! He's going to be pushing out across the middle here, and I'm pretty sure he's going to crush through White Rose forces without much opposition at all. And there we go. White Rod does have some Templars, but those ghosts are on the hunt. Oh my god, feet! Oh! Great snipes on the Templar. The storm forced to be used on ghosts, which isn't the most effective use of storm. Obviously, White Rod wanted to use it on Marines and Marauders. And here we go. So many Marauders. I doubt even the counter unit, the Archon, will be able to deal with this. Although they are clumped up in a nice little position, but those Archons are just getting melted by combined focus fire. And this should be game. I don't see White Rod coming out of this alive, and he will GG. So Tarson takes yet another game off of White Ra. Despite White Ra's, um, and White Ra and me actually, we thought of this ourselves, man. Uh, we kind of got, uh, got together after the last game, cooked it up, and said, you know what? You got to play a more aggressive game, White Ra. You can't let Tarson play macro with you. And White Ra did. I mean, for all intents and purposes, he did. He just let a couple of his warp prisms fail, which was uncharacteristic. Um, and on top of that, you know. I think Tarson just got into that macro mode. Even though he was behind the base for some time, he, you guys see now how Tarson is such an experienced late game player and is able to just crush through anything that opponents can field. So great game, but that's not it. We have a game five coming up. That is a rubber match. That's the final game of the series. So stay tuned, guys. Don't go anywhere.